Wow, my layout is like just completely overcrowded with trains. And I've got some guests coming Saturday to uh, view the layout. And, uh, well, it's time to uh, clean up a few things to uh, red up the layout a bit and uh, show you what's going on. Anyway, red up is a term I learned during my days in Pittsburgh. So I'm just going through. This section's kind of done here. Um, just trying to fix things like this. I don't know if you see that crack in my ballast. Um, just trying to go over stuff like that. I like to keep the uh, continuity of the layout scenery. So fixing things like that really helps with a consistency. You get stuff like this going on too. Stuff just gets loose after a while. Um, if you can see in here, there's some residue from when I did my cloud painting adventure. Something I'd like to revisit again someday. Of course I did this after the layout was built a couple years, a few, few years later. They leave something to be desired. Anyway, I completely made a mess of the layout doing that. So what I'm doing is just fixing things like this. Where the ballast is kind of cracked. I use um, water-soluble uh, methods of attaching my ballast. So diluted carpenter's glue or white glue and uh, just wet water. You know, just water with a couple drops of dishwashing detergent in there. But the stuff does kind of dry out after a while. I get stuff like this where things kind of crack and give way. I don't know where the extra ballast goes to. It just shifts around or something, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just going through and fixing that stuff up. So what I'll do is find a brush, you know, and just kind of move some stuff around where that crack was. And uh, give it a spray. And then you'll see the glue will just kind of distribute itself. I don't know if you can see that. That's cracked up pretty good. And I can kind of do this sort of action on it. Loosen some of it up. Push it back over. I just like to get the water and glue right off the rails as soon as I can. It'll be a final cleanup when I'm done here. There's this kind of stuff too that happens. Some of it balls up. Look at that, that's pretty loose. Sometimes it's easier just to pull it right out. Uh, just a bit of this.
also just going through and chasing out cobwebs. They're everywhere. Just a chip brush really works good for this. Here's a good trick with your uh, telegraph poles. If you've got a section of layout where you can't really run your telegraph poles across, you can terminate your line here with an H fixture and then do another one. I hope you can see it way down there in the distance. Down there. And you can kind of act like there's an underground line that connects the two. God, the more I look, the more uh, these dead spots I find. So this is a siding. I could get away with a little greenery. See if I can cover up all this crack here. So I'm just working this back section of my layout. This section here is only about 33 inches wide at the narrowest. And this is where Federal Servo is and my other flats. I left this area open kind of to film trains coming through and I, I like the backdrop of the factory flats. So people have asked me what I use for ballast, and this is it basically, Woodland Scenics Fine Cinders, mostly. I got a little bit of this Medium Cinders a while back, but um, basically I'll fill the ties with some sand. You can see some evidence of it here on the sidings, and then cover it over with a fine ballast. I really like the fine. Um, I think it looks like old cinders the best, and that's kind of the look I'm going for, kind of mid to late 50s, maybe even mid to late 40s into mid to late 50s. Um, so that's basically what I use. Um, I think it looks the best. So I'm gonna touch up some more spots through here and just continue down. You see, these are the two mains coming through. Then I've got these sidings that serve Wilford and uh, Federal Servo here. I gotta turn the lights down on that. I think that's too bright. Let's see if I could show you what's going on. There's a power supply there. I think if I turn that counterclockwise. I can lower the voltage. Oh, that was too much. <laughs> Let's go back a little bit. Oh, now I killed it. <clears throat> oh, it's over. Man, that's sensitive. Kind of cool. I like that. This building, this was a Lexan front I did, and it's covered over with some uh, plastruck brick sheet. And uh, the windows were laser, laser cut windows that I had um, made for me custom by Andre who used to do the river leaf models and uh, shipped me a whole box full of them. I actually went out and uh, measured these using my iPhone measuring app. Um, there's a pretty well-known building in Detroit that has many different sides. 
you could almost model that building 10 times over and it would be different every time for your layout. Um, anyway, that's what I did. And then the concrete is uh, basswood slats, you know. I gotta do a little touch up on this building. Everything just kind of falls apart after a while. It's kind of the dirty secret of a layout. The maintenance is dusting and cobweb removal and uh, reattaching dried out scenery. One of my favorite glues is this Eileen's tacky glue. Um, I use it for a lot of stuff, even in the shop, you know, for temporarily tacking things together for fit up. Um, but I use it a lot on the layout for reattaching scenery and, and things like, you know, my loose vent here. Just use my favorite tool in the shop, my little pointed stick. And, uh, you know, just a little dot of this stuff. Just works great and um, doesn't leave a whole lot of residue. Works quick. And it's really good for attaching uh, materials, like totally different materials. So just give that a second there. By the way, here's my scenery cart. I used to love these Harbor Freight carts. They used to be really cheap. This has all my scenery materials plus details that I've painted, you know, when I, I paint up batches of detail parts, I'll store them in these things and uh, have them available for use when I need them. One thing that gets on my nerves a little bit is when ballast kind of sticks to the side of the rail here. Just try to remember to come do this when I'm done messing around. Just a nice stiff brush just to knock that off the side of the rail. Just, it's not a very natural, realistic look. I also like to check and make sure I didn't glue any of my switches shut. Um, these are the old uh, Atlas under table switch machines, which I've had about 85, 80% luck with. Some of them are just duds right out of the box, but if you set them up right, you get this kind of mechanical anti-derail feature. Just wanna make sure I didn't glue anything shut. I found this nice Pecos River car hiding out back here. I forgot I had this. Um, one thing I'm chasing around too is from my cloud painting misadventures. I got these, I don't know if you can see them. There's little sky blue boogers all over my layout. I've been trying to pick some of them off. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you some. 
Hey, look at that. Right there, right on that piece of whatever that is. Yeah, here's what I'm talking about. A lot of cobwebs up here. You can see, I really recommend uh, getting your backdrop figured out before you build scenery. I'm really tempted to repaint this roof. Of course, after I clear off all the cobwebs. This is something you probably don't see normally in the videos I film. Yeah. I don't know what I want to do about this yet. I might just let it go. This was a pretty old building from my old layout and it, it was remodeled twice and then it was like cut down to be a flat on this layout. And uh, it's kind of just freestyled, you know. I wanted a building with a loading dock. So these uh, support rods or whatever are made with that jeweler's string. Stuff's pretty cool. <laughs> I got a few more crackies back here. This part of the layout. I think I'm just going to probably stop about here. Just touch up some more of these other things. Probably don't show up in videos a whole lot, but uh, to the naked eye, I mean, it drives me nuts at least. So I gotta patch this stuff. I probably gotta get back there and Chase out some cobwebs too, I bet. Yeah. I should put a truck back there, huh? I've got a whole box of vehicles I've been meaning to, to get into. But yeah, I could stand to have like a nice old box truck back there. It's a good idea, I think. Anyway, let me just go along the treetops here. Brushing all this loose scenic material out of here. Going to inspect this area for loose ballast and whatever else. I can see some coming off right there. I think I got most of it, most of the loose stuff. I'm trying to work my way out of the curve here to the front of the layout. All right, I gotta repair some roofs too. Um, this is one of my flats here. As you can see, the roof has become discolored and it's also lifted in a few spots. That's about where it lives. You've probably seen it in my videos before. As you can see some weird fade pattern on the uh, black construction paper I sometimes use on the backdrops to kind of uh, shadow box some of these some of these flats I have. So there's a little roof access shed. So I'm gonna go and repaint this too. Brought some acrylics over. Just gonna dab some on and try to clean this up a bit. All right, I've repaired some of my roofs. I don't think I wanna mess around anymore. But uh, just a little freshen up here. I got the top of that one repainted. All right, so I've worked my way out of the curve to the front of the layout here, and as you can see, now I'm just patching ballast, 
cleared out my little yard here. And uh, I'm going to go down through there. That That's actually not in bad shape, really. But I, I do got to scrub the tracks pretty good. Got to scrub all my rails so nothing conks out when I have my visitors. I hate that. All the work I put into my engines, you know, putting extra pickup rollers on the tenders and stuff. I don't want them dying on some some dirty spot I left behind. I also got to decide what engines are going to stay on the layout. Traffic jam over here. Well, holy crap, after all these years, I found Sasquatch. No, I mean, seriously, I lost this Sasquatch figure. This is an Artista Sasquatch figure, and I, I lost it for many years. So I, I bought another one, and uh, he's way down here. I think I bought uh, a Scenic Express one, which is arguably a little nicer. But... I found my original Sasquatch. It was hiding behind uh, GB Tower down here. I saw his feet sticking out. And uh, I can't believe it. He was like laying right here all this time. Wow. A true Sasquatch sighting. Well, now I can have two. I think I'm going to take him to the paint shop, though. All right. One last effort here is to repair the roofs of these two buildings. Got them in the shop. I'll show you what happened. These have been uh, sporting a sky blue speckled paint job for quite a while now, so I'm going to get some color on these roofs and try to fix this up. Alright, so I just hit the roofs with some uh, black gray model air. Should be good for this purpose. And then now what I'm going to do is... Uh, Try to do some variegation on the color by sponging some uh, black over it. And then I'm going to do some washes on these uh, seams and maybe change the color of some of these patches, make them darker to uh, kind of represent some newer chunks of roofing material that went on here to plug a leak or two. And then finally I'll do some touch up and some dry brushing. As you can see, I sponged on a little black with uh, just a beat up piece of artist sponge here, I guess. And now I'm just tracing in a little bit of uh, black wash under these seams. Mostly trying to pull them down. I don't know, I didn't like that sponge painting I was doing, so I got one of these guys, one of these foam brushes, and I diluted my black tube acrylics here, and I'm just doing this technique here. Let's see if I like it. And uh, giving a little wipe with a rag there. And then uh, we end up with some nice food. going all right this is what I got going on this backside won't be seen that much but I'm gonna try some dry brushing over this see what it looks like when I'm done now, this brush is gnarly Can't even tell you what happened to it. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead on this one. This building, by the way, was made out of some old uh, downtown deco 
walls. He used to sell them on eBay. Not sure if he still does. And then just some windows I had in my scrap bin. And uh, I can't remember what this was, but I built it back in like 2011 on my old layout. All right, no more blue speckles. All right, well, this is almost done. I do want to repair this piece of trim board that came off here. And, uh, you know, this cleanup project is getting me in the mood to do some scenery on the layout. I've been overdue. And uh, here's some notes I made on the back of this. You can see I just made it out of MDF and some three-quarter pine. This is how I used to make a lot of my buildings, especially the background flats. Have some notes on here. I kept track of all the paints I used on here. And uh, I built it in October of 2011. This is when I was rebuilding the, the old Greenbrook layout. This is named for my grandfather. I always wanted his name on one of my buildings. And uh, so I'm just gonna clean it up. I, I don't know, I put this little lightning rod on here where the insulator's coming down. To, what should be a ground rod. Kind of cool building for something that sits in the back background there. What the heck red did I use on this? I'm really curious. Special oxide red. Yeah, I think that's another one that's long gone. So yeah, let me fix that up and get this place back on a layout and clean up some of the scenery around it. The final uh, roof technique was to paint this with that uh, model air, black, gray. Oh, sorry about my camera. And then kind of wash it over with that sponge brush with some black acrylic. And then I kind of traced out the seams with, uh, with a smaller brush and some thin black acrylic and then just dry brushed it over. I might spray some clear on this. Just to knock the shine off a little bit. Where, where this lives, it doesn't really matter. I wasn't trying to get too carried away on these roof jobs. I just wanted to clean up my uh, splatter. So now I'm over in the yard, and I don't know what it is about the turntable, but the spiders love it. I usually make uh, cobwebs all the way underneath here. I love this turntable. All right, I think I got them all out. Just real minor ground cover repairs over here. Only had a couple loose spots. I just kind of push this around with a brush and spray it with some wet water. It should help keep it down. You get chunks like this. Just... Looks like I picked up a tree. Oh man. That got left behind.
I think everything's okay in the yard. Everything seems to be pretty clean. trying to decide if I want to use one of these resin junk piles I painted up. Got another one kicking around somewhere too. Got one with like, sorry, steam locomotive parts here. It's like it was embedded in between some big stumps and left to uh, rot, I guess. go like that maybe I buy these resin detail wads whenever I see them and I kind of paint them up in batches and uh, kind of leave them on that scenery cart for situations like this I'm not that great at painting these I, I've been trying to paint them so that the individual details pop a little better each time I do and I, I try some new things it looks all right. Uh, I try to blend them into the scenery because they sit on these kind of thick bases. So, you know, you can kind of dump some scraps around them to help blend them in. Um, so, I don't know. Anyway, I think it looks pretty natural there. Here's some little junk piles. I got to make more of these. This was just made out of, like, scraps from my junk box. Um, and uh, I make them by making a pile of them and then dripping thin CA over them and then, uh, and then just paint them up. I gotta do some more. I, I've been collecting some pretty good scrap lately for my various projects. Well, not only has my layout been refreshed, but my spirits have been too. It was a really nice time to host a little party. I had about 12 or 13 people and sadly, I didn't film much of it. I didn't film any of it at all. I just didn't get a chance. I was kept so busy, but it was great to have the rail rats over here. They're kind of a local round robin group. There's some two railers, some three railers, some HO scale guys. Um, had a buddy come up even from uh, Cleveland and it was just great. And I was left with this fantastic gift made by none other than uh, Lee Turner guy whose skills I greatly admire. So I'm really proud to have this unique piece on my layout. And I hope to get to uh, do it again, do it some more. It's been many years since I got to do something like that. And it's just a lot of fun to share, share your work and just hang out. And uh, anyway, I hope this video also kind of gave you an idea um, on just some of the basic maintenance of a layout like this is a good size layout but it's not overly huge but if you don't keep up on it you know it'll demand your attention after a while so anyway i hope you guys found this video uh interesting and we'll see you next time